Welcome back, everybody, to game number two of eHome versus IG. I am LD of DotaCommentaries.com. Joining me is Luminous. You're watching Beyond the Summit's World Tour, and this is the semifinals. I can't believe that game number one. Such a wacky game, I think, to put it mildly. MMY played one of the best Rubik's I have ever seen, especially for such a short game. In the end, seconds. just wasn't enough. IG overwhelmed them. They take game one, and here we are, Lumi. eHome on the brink of elimination. I was singing songs about Darkseer, why Darkseer is this, and why Darkseer is that. IG says, forget about the Darkseer, we're just going to go push. I don't care if you have wall, we're going to push through it. Having the such early mech from Chuan as well as Hannah God, his play was absolutely exceptional. YYF shows why he was the originator when it came to Shackle Shot. Not Light of Heaven, not Chuan, it was just... From the beginning till now, it was just Ye Ye Fong Shackles, and he showed it. I think he missed like one shackle the entire game. It was absolutely insane play. We're saying, oh man, he didn't have enough stuns on the team. Don't need stuns when you're pushing towers, because yeah, the that, towers don't really... That sprout <laughs> shackle shot combo was just so good. Time after time getting the pickoffs. YYF played exceptionally well, but it was a team effort overall. I, IG just, everything about the strat was so coordinated. The mass necro books, uh, the quick farm on the Chen, uh, the, the calm reaction... Right, because when, when, when that game started, let's not forget, E-Home four-man grouped up bottom. How many yeah. times have we see the team just panic and make big mistakes? In this, uh, in this very same tournament, uh, Orange and MUFC ran that strat earlier this tournament, and we were pretty successful at times with it. But IG just so composed, just calmly take Tier 1, and then they take Tier 2 out pushing E-Home. And in the end, E-Home just could never, they really could never get a, fit, a foothold in that game. Sure, Darkseer is great at turtling if he gets the items and the levels, but he didn't get them. Right, he definitely did. I mean, Morphling had to get pipe. That's how the game went for Ehome. <laughs> IG literally, I felt like they wrote the script for the game, right? Again, like you mentioned, they defended the tier 2 push on the bot lane very decently. Pushed down two towers quickly on the top. I'm oh still very God. impressed about the Venomaster going to mid lane. Ferrari immediately going to Ancient. He was already stacking him beforehand. They literally had the game script written down. And well, let's see if they can do it for game two as well. They give up the Lycanthrope, which doesn't mean too much. I mean, it's a very powerful hero, but many teams have been beating Lycanthropes overall. And it's Nature's Prophet once again. Tinker. And if they're going to pick a Tinker... Oh, buddy. I'm going to lose my mind right here. If they get a Chen Tinker for Nature's Prophet, this can be a repeat of what we saw in game number one. I want to say Lycan's going to offer you a lot more in this in this no, game than no, that so. than the, uh, the Morphly will. Can That's for sure. Tris. Uh, not in the laning stage, but if it comes down to split pushing, Lycan can do it a lot quicker, assuming he gets some items up. Now, as we see an Enchantress pick, that one probably going to be played by Chuan. Here's the question. Will he find the farm? This is a team that can kill him pretty much all over the map. You can offensive jungle if you want, or you can just push before Lycan really has an ability to become an impact. It might be a game where by the time Lycan comes online, if it's not too late, Ehome are already a few towers down. We'll see, though. They do get a Chen and a Brewmaster. Great team fight here, good initiation. Lycan doesn't have to be the one who runs it first, but still no real lockdown for either team. Uh, just these teams not too concerned about having those reliable disables, going for uh, lots of other things instead. Push, team fight, uh, you know, abilities and damage, but just no stun so far. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, and I'm not sure whether IG could pay, play the exact same game they played just right now, Five because it's remaining. it's one thing to do it against a CK Morph and a Darkseer, it's another thing to do it against a Brewmaster. Uh, Martial Machine, again, will still hurt just about anything, including the Lycan and Brewmaster, but the ability to shut down two heroes in, in, at once right now, from Brewmaster by himself, that's kind of different. Also, Chen is a great sustain push kind of hero. Enchantress, not that kind of hero because her creeps will time out eventually. I don't think IG could run that sustain push that they did in game number one. So we're going to see how IG will take their Tinker and Nature's Prophet play to a different aspect. And this is what I love about Nature's Prophet and, and Tinker. They're so versatile as a nature, they can give you that insane push early on if you wanted to. Or they could just fall back on getting hexes getting four staff on whatever else. So let's see how IG will play this this time. Yeah, and I, I'm glad, I'm really glad you brought up the four staffs because to have those against Brewmaster and Lycan, that's going to make them very, very frustrated in team fights. assuming IG go for them, assuming they get them up quickly. Right. Uh, and it's like you said, they, they have the versatility in terms of how you want to play them in lane, tinker even how you want to skill the hero. Uh, we normally see the March build, but last game we saw Ferrari opted for a couple points in laser to dominate the lane early. And who's going to lane against this tinker right now? That's what I'm curious about. Uh, I suppose it could be Brewmaster. We've seen him go 1v1 mid, but uh, I'm not sure just yet. All the standard Chinese supports get banned out. Rubik was banned in the very first stage. Lushrak and Shadow Shaman banned out uh, subsequently to that. And Enigma gets the ban here. 
who are we left with? Shadow Demon and Venomancer, I guess, are the, the two big ones. Crystal Manny could be an option, but really in this game, uh, she feels like she'll be total food if, she, if anyone picks her up. Ventral Spear is a decent choice. Uh, we kind of forget about her because uh, she just never picked anymore. But the swap is always pretty big. If you could get off some instant swap hex combos against Lycan, that's pretty snazzy. If you get against Chen, that's big game. Uh, but for now, I mean, IG Venomancer. definitely has the option. Venomancer is another support that we forgot, but Ven uh, it's going to get picked up by Ehome this time. I mean, how is Ehome's push looking? They're, they're not shabby with their push now if they want to run as something like that. Uh, Lycan, Chen, Venomancer. And Brewmaster is a decent push in his own right. It's funny to say because, yeah, they had a Darks here last game, but this Ehome lineup is so much stronger defensively. We saw last game, even with Darks here, you vacuum. Half the time he couldn't get the wall off. He was disabled, chain stunned. And even if he got the wall off, Really early in the game, I mean, the wall is not going to do too much, especially against Profit and Taker. It'll scare you off, it'll do some damage, but it's not like you're trapping a really high-level Morphling or Anti-Mage in it, where he's just going to melt everyone down. Uh, and in the end, Darkseer just didn't have the time to get those levels up, wasn't as effective, but Panda, Chen, Venomancer, these three heroes will be absolute beasts at turtling. And the nice thing about Venomancer is uh, that March Machines will not kill off those wards, so they can be a decent way to try and deal with the push. Here we go for IG, it's a Shadow Demon. Going for that uh, sort of jack-of-all-trade support. Some good defensive capabilities. Nice hero to try and set up kills on Lycan in the jungle early. Who is IG going to round their lineup out with? I don't know, but I'm doing a stun check so far, and I see zero, zero <laughs> stuns. I There's mean, a boulder have Sprout, toss. Have, That's it. For IG. No, for IG, they have oh, no yeah. stuns. I guess for, for Radiant, I mean, they're lacking on stuns as well, but I, I don't think they're really worried about that. They got the Gale for any kind of slow, and that's all really Lycan and Brewmaster need. And yes, if they want to really go for it, they do have this Boulder Bash as well as the Tornado. But for now, Shadow Demon's Purge is going to do absolutely nothing against Lycan. Throw up. The disruption is going to be somewhat annoying against Lycan, and that is, I think, the biggest thing here. Uh, but, you know, Enchantress Enchant again is not going to do too much. This is going to be an awkward team fight where I feel like people are going to dance around, dance around, dance around until one of those slow hit from Ehome, and that's that's really uh, you know troublesome for IG. Yeah, maybe that long slow siege not going to be as effective. Also, God forbid this panda gets a blink dagger up and is able to drop it off, jump in and clap and use his ult. IG, they've got some defensive capability. Probably going to have a fast mech from somebody, whether that's Chuan on the Enchantress uh, or the Nature's Prophet picking up. But whoever ends up getting that. There's a lot of there's a decent amount of burst damage here for Ehome. And I'm starting to wonder, is this where you look towards an Earthshaker? Because if you get an Earthshaker and you have Panda, your team fight looks pretty much unbeatable. Uh, now it probably wouldn't fit into their lanes, but that big AoE stun, just nobody having it right now, especially not IG. And I think because there's so so lack of lockdown, I think that this Shadow Demon's play will be absolutely crucial. If he plays it well and he stays back. Lycanthrope ain't ever killing anybody. Like, you could focus, 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 there's a disruption. Suddenly Lycanthrope's like, oh well, who would I go next? Tinker Laser is going to be a big thing here as well. So, um, here you go, there's a lockdown. That will bypass just about anything, including Shadow Demon. That's a Storm Surge, he'll zip in, and I think this is an exceptional pick. And are we going to see Ehome X on a Storm? Or is My PCT, body may not be ready. Or is PCT going to usurp the throne again? He has played the Storm the last time Ehome read it. Of course, MMY Storm, uh, X's Storm, like you legendary. mentioned, is legendary in the Chinese scene, yeah. and really in the world at this point, I would say. Although some of our viewers might not appreciate it, they go for Windrunner, so we're going to see YYF reprising his role. And Windrunner also great here to have against Lycan, uh, very strong in the laning phase. Windrun really a, a huge nuisance, and then if you ever hit a Shackle, who cares if you can run at max move speed? You're locked in place for a long time. And uh, what about what I mean with can you hit a shackle? <laughs> he's he's going to hit a bunch. This is why we're talking about. It. And it is PCT playing the storm this time around. So yeah, it's uh, when when YYF hits the storm, uh, hits the shackle. Not not if he can. YYF again <laughs> is going to be on the windrunner. We have Faith playing the Shadow Demon. Ferrari going to be playing Tinker once again. Same thing with Zoe playing the same hero. Going to be on Nature's Prophet and Chuan playing the jungler once again on the Enchantress. Yeah, it looks like they might be... How are they going to lane this? Is it a Windrun or Shadow Demon dual lane? Maybe Faith just going to play some wards. He's going to be scouted out by the, the Wolf and... Well, for the Dire, they have Trian, so don't expect to see anyone die early on. It looks like Ehome might be slightly concerned about their jungle being warded. They're all grouped up. I'll introduce Ehome now. QQQ on the chat. MMY on the Venomancer. Not going to be playing that Storm. Sad to say. Although I do like PCT Storm quite a bit. I, I have a soft spot in my heart for it. King J on the Panda. PCT on the Storm. Looks like he's going mid. And Lamb, uh, he can't be going top. 
No, there's no way. He's gonna be in the jungle, so I guess... Who is gonna go top for Ehome? He, he might just go top, I think, because Chen, really? Chen, Chen Veno is going to be supporting King J on the bot. Well, he could. Yeah, I think this is predicting the top lane. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's going to be just solo Zoe. We, we could do that. Not yeah. only do you see this, but if it is, Lycan will have a pretty decent time in this lane. And he can also do some pretty cute things like pull the creep wave with the wolves. Haste. Not sure if he'll be able to pull it with this particular set because he just spawned them. They won't last too long. But yeah, if this is the lane, it might work out surprisingly well. What's your thought on, uh, we see this game and game and game again, so you see why, why, with, with Hastrian. Gonna poke his head and trying to drop a couple of wards. No, she's doing, just harass. Because she doesn't even have the wards. Yeah, here comes, uh, Faith. Dodging by them, but there's Observe Ward. They see exactly for where Faith is, but Windrunner by herself. Just putting out three heroes, like, come at me. Alright, her, her uh -oh. Windrunner gets out. Uh -oh. And MY looking for the Gale, not gonna hit it. He timed uh, that which, one down which for a second. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, he, he was watching it. Uh, what's your thought on, on pulling regen for, for carry heroes? Teams do it all the time. I'm just wondering if you think that's fair or... Uh, you know. I, do, do you mean do I think should it be allowed? Or, or do I think yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah. strategy? Well, I, I mean, to me, if it's in the game, you should allow it. So if Ice Frog doesn't want to make it... Uh, it you know, if it's something that the community feels should be banned and Ice Frog agrees, then he should just change the engine so you can't share regen. Uh, or maybe you can't do it until a certain point in the game. But either way, it's Faith caught out, and he is so screwed right now. Defensive disruption, nice shot, canceling the clap and the stop. Faith absolutely trapped, a little hellish prison. He will go down, first blood claim, but QQQ taking some big damage. It will be Jungle Wars, but giving up first blood on the bottom lane, not a good start. So, I mean, I think from a balance standpoint, uh, as far as your know, pulling region goes, if, if, if we don't want to allow it, it should be in the engine that it's not. There should be something in the game inherently that prevents it. Uh, I think it is a great strategy on a lot of heroes. It allows you to do things like rush a bottle. We've seen Morphling just go solo mid and, uh, you know, just have that quick Wraith ban. LT last Teddy or anti mage with a 4-man show. So strategically, I think it's a great choice. Uh, as far as balance goes, I think it's really up to the, the engine and the coding if we want to prevent it. I mean, in this game, we saw Lycan get pulled a lot of clarities on the top lane, and he's, you know, chilling with the Bring Up of Status first. Uh, I feel like, I mean... Balance-wise, I think it's uh, completely balanced in my opinion, given the fact that your supports are already very poor, right? They gotta buy the wards, courier, sentry wards, and they still are pulling regen. I mean, it's a, that's a huge investment if you're the support player. Right. So I think it's, it is it is pretty balanced. Look at Chuan. Especially when they're trading hits in the... Yeah? I mean, Chuan didn't pull regen, but he bought a bunch of wards. He's sitting on nothing right now, just a couple of clarities. Right. Uh, so, you know, whatever, like you like you put out, gold is still limited resource. Sure, you can try and... It's not like they're buying Divine Rapiers for their carries here, which, by the way, you used to be able to buy all sorts of items uh, and full items for your heroes, but that has been disabled for a long, long time. I am going way back with that, like five years or so. Uh, but that used to be the old strat. Wow. Look at Chuan. He's getting stats at level two. This is... Oh, he did pick it up. I thought maybe he was reserving the skill point. This is... Huh. Because that heal is going to give you a ton of effective HP. Assuming you get it off. Ehub don't have much lockdown. This is a little... Why would he do this? I guess he's he just want to get a lot of mana, because there's going to be a lot of creep stealing. There you go, creep being stolen. And oh, some of his mana will be burned. He's juking left and right. And here comes PCT. There's a pull. Look at the rune. He immediately gets spawned. And will that be enough? Oh, that would be. If he had boy. the final reward. Well, the build already not paid off. If he had the heal there, he would have lived. That's kind of a I'm not sure if he had mana to use it, because he got 125 and had like 70 as well, so... Oh, oh, well, yeah, then he was just screwed. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. So they rotate that was, uh, that was PCT getting a free kill on the mid lane. He definitely does not want Storm to have that kind of start. Yeah, Ferrari's not going to be real happy about that one. Well, the offensive jungle looks to be over. Chuan is now defensive jungling, which means this tri lane is now a dual lane. King Jay can have a much better time here. Very good, strong wards for the Dire Squad, even though some of these wards were spotted, have not been de-warded yet. Has Chen picked up any sentries? No, he is not. Has Venomancer? No, he is not either. So, despite seeing those wards being placed, IG do have good vision, so we shouldn't see too many deaths here. As I say that, we're not going to see a death, but we're going to see a big nuisance. This is the Satter Soul Stealer, Mana Burning, and then running the hell away. God, that's annoying. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the middle here, PCT finds himself a double damage. That means he's going to get the ne next entire group wave for free. Or perhaps he's going to save it for a level 6. And that's going to be a dangerous thing as well. Double damage storm at level 6. Oh my god, you're going to get a couple kills if he decides to gank on the bot lane. But for now, let's check out on tap, uh, top, excuse me, 
Lamb's got 17 creep kills to Zoe's 25 and 8 deny. So we expect Lycan to have a little bit of easier time, but Zoe just showing that he definitely can last it and harass uh, just about better than anybody in the Chinese scene. He's controlling this lane. Those Lycan wolves are very annoying, but he's dealing with it. At some point, this Lycan is going to get big enough that he doesn't even have to be in lane. He can just flash from the jungle. But it's a, a really admirable farm here by by uh, Joe. Sure, he's got the trance to help him last hit, but really Lycan is two wolves. Uh, are going to be a little bit easier to overall get the last hits with. So it just comes out to Joe having really good timing here uh, as far as getting the last hits. And that means if he wants the Hand of Midas, which it seems to be the the favorite build, well, he goes for TP scroll, uh, but he's still got 1,400 gold in the bag. Could have a very, very quick Midas. Man, I think he's Midas rushing and he is still getting TP scroll. I love it. I love it. Raph Nature is back up. But here comes the double damage being pop here. Not level 6, now level 6, but March is dropped down. I think this is... Probably the most unfortunate time that Stormster had to use this DD. Can't really do too much, and he's gonna just Where's try Ferrari to last the creeps. Oh, he's gonna go stack the ancients. Okay. So Ferrari heads bottom. Now, this is one of the downsides to being on the dire side as a tinker is you have to walk a lot farther to stack your ancients. For the radiant, you can stack the ancients and check the rune uh, very easily, mm -hmm. and then it's the top rune. So you're right back in lane. Still, he pushed the lane first with Marsh, uh, and this is one of Storm's weaknesses. I want to say as a laner is he's not. Really the best at pushing the lane out. We're seeing PCT auto attack and you're trying to do just that. Ancients get stacked, Ferrari checking bottom rune. Will he find it? And he will. That's big, because it also denies one to PCT. PCT, early magic wand, picked up another TP scroll. Look at all these players just getting TP so early in the game. Has not delivered it yet, but he will soon. Yeah, this is... Very reminiscent of complexity play, they like to get TP scroll really early, and if you see a gang coming, if they have the resource to TP and support, they will definitely do so. And uh, just a good sign of, you know, I guess slower and turtle-ish play, more more uh, uh, calculative, more methodical. Uh, bottom lane. Well, Disruption Soulcatcher is going to hit on King J. Uh, oh, actually the Soulcatcher did not hit. If it had, they might have been able to get the kill. Prophet ults, TPs, cancels that TP. Thinking about going on bottom lane. 1900 gold in the back, so, so close. Uh, in fact, I believe he has some Midas now. Yeah, he does. So if he wants to go for it, he's going to TP back. And this is why he gets the TP scroll. TP back to base. Uh, picks up the Midas. Although I would have liked to see that in the reverse. Either way, uh, he's going to be able to go back to lane and use the Midas right away. Already hitting level 7. And this is going to give them a lot extra burst damage uh, and some great potential here in the mid game. Joe having a fantastic start. So unlike the last game, this one's a lot slower by comparison. No tower being taken, and YYF on the bot lane is going to eat a Gale on the Centaur in position. Perfect stomp, and the Micro, the clap to after, and there's no way why I was going to make it out there. King J picks up yet another kill for his team, but this is kind of a slow start for both teams. No tower, not high amount of kills. Who is it favoring overall? Who has the late game advantage? Who has the mid game advantage? Well... It's really hard to say, right? I think IG eventually, if they get up enough hexes, are going to be the better, like, ultra late game team, but... I mean, I think each team just has different times where they're going to hit their peak. Right now, in the laning stage, IG has some very strong heroes. Uh, when they get up the... Oh, Joe. Dropping low! Not going to be enough. That was close. But bottom lane, it's King J. Big dive on the YYF. He's got his ult picked up. To me, Ehome is a team that in the mid game is going to be very potent. Uh, but Panda Storm... Uh, and even Lycan, they all tend to fall off in the late game. If IG get a couple of four stabs, a couple of hex, uh, I would actually favor them come late game. Uh, but that's assuming that the farm stays even, and with a Lycan on the board, uh, it's really hard to expect that farm to stay too even. Prophet can help balance the equation with that early Midas pickup. Ooh. It's just, I think it's Big storm zip from the mid lane to the river and finds Tinker. Tinker grabbing wards under the ward vision against a storm sir, always a very dangerous thing. MMY hits a perfect kill and that was the kill. They're wise to his tricks, Lumi. He <laughs> goes right around the 8 minute mark. They know he's going to go check that bottom rune. They have vision of it as well and stack the ancients and they punish him. Yep. Uh, in fact, did he even get the ancient stack off? No, it looks like he didn't get it because I believe there was he already did it once. Uh, Alright, you know, maybe start to farm it. Either way, that's going to slow him down a little bit. And not getting the kill, denying those boots of travel. So yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty good for Ehome overall. PCT is having a good time mid. And this is a, normally a very tough matchup for Storm uh, 1v1. Now, Tinker did not opt for the Laser Rockets build. Uh, and I actually think against Storm, that build is a lot stronger. But it doesn't give you as much mid-game potential, generally speaking. So he opts for the safer build. But that does mean PCT gets a good start. Here comes the push top. And it looks like, will we see a defense? MMY setting up some wards. He's level 6. Not sure this is quite enough. 
Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be enough. The damage is gonna come out a little bit too soon. Vlad's is finished. Are they actually gonna take a fight here? Lamb does have his ultimate. Gale hits on two hero, and this would be time to go teleport in. Lamb pops his ultimate. Zo says, see ya, and TP's out. Chuan, unfortunately, does not have that ability. King J is gonna be here as well. Chuan's gonna be left to the wolves. Well, very, very <laughs> Quite literally. Here. And he's is gonna be going down. Will he, though, is actually tanking for a long time. Finally goes down. Look at Chuan's build. Stats, level 1 enchant, 2 nature's attendant, and impetus. Jesus, what the hell is this? Two points in stats, just very, very un unorthodox build. It's not enough though, he still goes down, but he was tanky beautifully for a while. And I guess it, it, it sort of makes sense, right? Because we look at Ehome's lineup, they have Storm who zips in, wants to pull you, and then the clat, if you can survive that initial burst, then your heal comes out, and that's where you can contribute. So not opting to level up enchant, uh, just going for two points right now to the heal and getting some stats, trying to tank up as much as possible. And I think against Storm, it kind of it, it, it might work out. It didn't there, but that was a pretty hopeless fight. Yeah, the, the reason I'm surprised that we don't see Enchant being leveled up is the cooldown significantly gets lower. King J gets sprouted up. She, he has his ultimate, gonna pop it right now, and that's gonna force a winner from YYF. She runs really, really far away, and that should be it. Now, Panda's duration at level 1 is pitifully low, but he's staying on the front lines for a long time. Another Boda Bash on Zo. They want this tier too, and are they gonna get it? Zo in position, trying to go for the deny. Nice deny here by Zo. Again, last thing like a Faust. MMY and dropping up a Poison Nova. That's gonna hit Chuan though. Taking March Machine. Here comes Storm to Seize Fate, pulls him up, and that's gonna be dead for Fate. King J still going at it. See Zo. Zo very low, getting blocked by the Tinker. Lucius. Oh no. Storm Strait gets a double kill. I think we're seeing a pink leader. I, I, this pick is just really killing it. Storm Spirit just zipping on the back line, picks off these squishy supports. Really nothing that the IG squad could do about it. He works so well when you have someone like the Panda to run in first, when you have the Chen to send you back to base. Storm to me is a hero that really needs the correct lineup built around him and a strategy that matches that. And he's having a good start, which means, guess what, Nature's Prophet and Tinker gonna be very, very scared to push by themselves. Even if Storm's not ganky, the threat of that gank is gonna keep you back. And look how far behind Ferrari is. 12 minutes in, still no boots to travel. Those couple of kills early really slowing him down. Also the fact that he was forced to come defend. 42 CS on him. The bottom lane is Joe. Caught a long way from home. He's at the, the tier 1 and PCT not going to engage. But again, even when he's not killing, he's putting a lot of pressure on. And it looks like it will be an early Orchid. I love the choice, especially with the bad farm of the Tinker. This silence is going to do wonders when he gets it up. Yeah, Orchid for, for any new Storm player, the best item by far for mono regeneration as well as combining with his Ball Lightning. Uh, ball Lightning takes a percentage of your uh, mana pool, and uh, well, Orchid gives you a very, very low mana increase pool, but gives you a lot of regeneration, which is exactly what you want Aww. for a Storm Shirt. And here we go, more initiation for Eho. We already have quite a bit with that Storm. It's a Blink Dagger up on Panda. TP in the middle lane from Ferrari. Four heroes grouped up. Uh, excuse me, that's all five, and they should be able to get this tower. No real opposition. Will there be a deny them? Ah, uh, it doesn't look like it. Just too many layers of rockets, but here comes the TP from Venomancer. MMY charges it, taking a lot of big damage in the back lines. It's Lamb. Amphis are hitting him pretty hard. He's held in place, going on to Joe. Will he be able to kill him off? Doesn't look like it. Meanwhile, Panda. Uh, where is that panda actually? YYF trying to run away from the wolves here. There you go, Ferrari caught out. He gets the pick off of PCT. I'm trying to figure out who's there. Panda barely lives. Didn't have his ult, survives without 100 health. Uh, he, IG really diving for this. Lamb set back to base, should be okay. The Chen heal not used throughout that entire engagement. And now MMY taking some big damage. Where is that damn heal? He doesn't think he needs to use it. MMY, a couple of opportunities to save his team. Says no, I don't want to. He's going to hold on to it. Yeah, a pretty pretty curious play. QQQ holding onto the hand of God, but Stormster zipped in, had no mana left, and he was next to a very low HP Tinker. I thought Tinker was dead for sure, but the March Machine again just juking everybody's expectation, including the pro players. The March Machine just took down Storm without mana, and then Lycan cleaned it up. But uh, Storm for a Tinker trade when Tinker is basically dead was definitely not worth it. IG they're really far behind right now in terms of gold as well as EXP. Go wise are down. Well, this That's... graph is not helping out. <laughs> but they EXP are down by 3,000, which is a significant amount on this stage of the game right now. Regarding gold, they're actually only down by about 1.5k. Pretty decent for them. I gotta say, Shackle in the middle lane. Joe taking some big damage. He will go down. Now the chase goes on to faith. There is a panel up that blink point out. Now the channel gets used. QQQ trying to save his own hide. 
won't help the team, but will it matter? King J the clap, not gonna hit the zip in from PCT. Going on to Faith, Faith taking some good damage, will be enough. Looks like one more zip, should get the kill, and now Chuan with the heal, with the points and stats, he should be okay. A nice dodge there, the Centaur was stolen back by Enchantress. Meanwhile, on the back lines, we see Tinker picking up a kill on Venomance, so who's trying to run away. That Storm Panda, oh, King J, held in place, shackled to the trees, a horrible prison crate for him, he'll take a fall. And in the end, Ehome lose four. It didn't feel like it. They all died so sporadically. Everyone except for PCT going down. And that's not what you like want. Yeah, they're thinking about a Roshan, no medallion courage just yet. It's going to take a couple of right clicks, but they have a little bit of time. Before that team fight, it was 9 to 6. After the team fight, uh, 11 to 7. A little bit uh, in favor of EG in that team fight. They're going right at this Roshan. I don't think they'll get it in time if the Radiant does know, and I think they have an inkling. But look at the Storm Surge. It has no mana because he was farming on the bot lane. Yes, because of that, I think Ehome's going to give up this Aegis. I'm not sure if they could get there in time anyway, even if they team smoked out of the fountain. Look how far back they are. MMY only now approaching his own small camp. Great decision making by IG. Most teams wouldn't go for Roach this early because they don't have a medallion like you mentioned. They don't have any sort of damage really. This is taking an eternity and a half. And here comes Ehom. They smoke up. There is no vision spotting that smoke, but they already got Roach and they get out. This might be the start of a big turnaround here for IG, who were having a pretty rough start, but with Tinker having that Aegis. Ferrari can afford to be aggressive, and even if Storm kills him once, most likely he'll be able to get away or have the backup arrive for that second round. Yeah, I think this Aegis is absolutely key, like you talked about backup. Also buys on time in terms of getting those key 4 staff. 4 staff is such an important item in this game. Again, like you mentioned earlier, good against Lycan, good against Panda Brute, uh, Brute Spirit, and also it's going to force Stormster to zip a little bit more, which, I mean, PCT's mana control has not been too impressive, uh, impressive in this game. He's zipping in right now, sees YYF to blink in. Oh man, this could be a big trap for YYF, but she win runs just fine. And here comes the March layer Shackle Shot. <laughs> Look at that Hackle Shot against King J. Teleport in. Does he have his ultimate? No, not for another four minutes. I think King J is going to go down. Wow. Sick play here. They can't tower dive against this team. They don't have the damage. I think the only hero who can stand on those front lines is like it. Oh, Q, Q, Q. Oh, oh he TP's out, but he dies at the fountain. To that urn charge. Nice play there by Fate. Spotting him with the shadow poison. Applying the urn charge through what would normally be the fog. And this is the problem for Ehome. They have a lineup that wants to be aggressive, but when they're diving towers, they're doing so into Marks of Machines, into the Prophet Ultimate, and into these Imps, the Shackles as well. So many ways for ID to punish over aggression. Chen having the heal, but not having the mechanism, and without that mech, without as many levels as you might like, he's just dying too fast. That's the second time now he's really been forced to use the heal on himself to survive, yes. and that's not what you need in this game. You need to be healing your team. Here we go, we have a staff of Wizard who gets picked up here, and the uh, quarter staff soon to be picked up after. Uh, four staff number one will be finished. I love the adjustment by Zoe here, building a point booster instead of other items. Uh, well, last game he went for Necro Book. This one he just wants for mass HP because he know he will be one of the target for Storm Surge to focus. So getting as much HP as possible is, is the key. Of course, he has Disruption to help him out, but HP is still the most important thing for him right now. For Ehome, they had such a good start, they got a really early blink day up on Panda, but they just haven't been able to find the right openings for King J. And it, part of it, it goes back to the fact that IG, they're five ranged heroes. Uh, they have a lot of long range heroes as well, with the mark, spam, the power shot. They can stand so far, so damn far back that really, you walk into blink, something's gonna attack you before you get that blink off. Uh, not to mention taking so much damage during that time, so King J really has been neutered in this game, despite farming well. There just hasn't been any openings for him. And that's how the Ehome need to find those openings, whether it's Storm or Lamb going in first. The way the game is progressing, they don't really have the best lineup to the ultra late game. Disruption on the PCT. He will be fine. The Orchid would be a big pickup to sort of give them that second initiation, but it's a while off. It's a while off, and I think this I, I think the Ehome's clock is winding down. Look at the amount of four staff about to get picked up here. Tinker already have his. Chuan has a staff of wizardry in his stash, so he's definitely gonna get one. I imagine Prophet's gonna get one as well. Just to say that I see his stash, he's going for the standard acceptor. So I think I feel two four staff and disruption and the fact that YYF can protect himself with win run, that should be more than enough to really shut down any kind of single target focus. And I think again in the long run, when you have multiple hexes, IG is favored. Right, IG really, they have the better long team fight in my book. Uh, there is a Venomancer ultimate that's normally good in sustained team fight. 
but with the multiple force stats, especially with Shackle shot. Oh, King J bottom lane. Is he gonna be forced to use the ult? Nope, shackled in place. Look at the damage from Chuan. This enchantress doing the dirty work here. And unfortunately, King J gets called out, which means even if they want to push top, they need that pan ultimate to try and go high ground. Ehome really pressing, and this is something we've seen from them before. They're a team that if they feel like they have the advantage or they need to push, they'll do so. And sometimes too aggressively to their own detriment, where you might see another team, another Chinese team like LGD, uh, sort of biding their time, getting that next set of items up, being a little more selective about their opening. They're really pressing right now, and it's not working out. It definitely is not working out. We have 400 go away from Windrun to finish her mech. Faith, about three or 200 gold to pick up a staff of wizardry of a long if he wants to go for it, or maybe uh, a bracer for another drums for his team. And uh, we do have Nature's Prophet very close to that Midas, so, or not Midas, the Axe Scepter. Massive amount of key items almost being finished. Tron again very close to his own four staff. Again, I think IG is progressing on their items. Uh, very splendidly, and, and Radiant, they're just not keeping up. And don't Lamb has, what, Necro 3, now Necro 2? Yeah, the Lycan is big, but after him, really, who's next in line? And actually, let's take a look at Gold Urn here. First time doing that for individual players of this game. It's Prophet way up there leading the charge, and, and Lycan pretty close to him, but as we look down the list, overall, the Dire Heroes, they're really not ahead in terms of farm, but I, I just think the items that they want to get are so much cheaper and cost-effective. Uh, that, you know, they don't really need big items at this point. If they get them, it's great. Uh, but overall, IG getting what they need, and don't forget, this Tinker was completely shut down early game. He's now yep. right up there with a the free farm Lycan. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the power of Tinker. He was uh, ancient stacking himself, he was marching, march farming all over the map. I mean, there are some good key items on the Radiant side, don't get me wrong. Like, Mech's up on Chen, that's pretty huge. Um, the Staff of, uh, the staff of Wizardry's uh, being stacked up, excuse me, the Oblivion staff being uh, picked up here on the PCT. He's going for that Orchid, and once again he finished it, like LT pointed out, very, very important as well. But it, it just, it feels like a different tier. Like, sure, you get an Orchid finish. What is that really going to do in a team fight? Well, I just feel like it's not going to do too much overall. Right, with multiple force stabs as well as disruption. If someone gets silenced, oh, just disrupt them. And you've talked about this before, I know, when we've cast together, is that. Uh, Shadow Demon is really probably the best way to deal with Storm Spear because he zips in, he grabs somebody, and that Shadow Demon just disrupts that hero, and your great initiation completely wasted. Orchid's not going to change that equation. They have to go for Shadow Demon first, but if you do that, that means you're ignoring a lot of other important heroes. And the one thing yeah. I was missing when I looked at the total gold earned, it the, uh, the, the carry is sort of the primary farmers on both teams are farming well, but it's the supports for IG. They're just really yes. outclassy. Uh, Ehome right now, and these squishy supports on Ehome, that could be big trouble, Shackle not gonna latch on Lamb, might try and force out his ultimate, he will use it kind of prematurely, he wants to fight, no he wants to run, that means no ult for about a minute, not the biggest deal, will he fight though, circling around, going for faith, and these Necronomicon minis will do big damage, Disruption maybe helping him here, he was gonna take a lot of damage, Blink it, clap by KJ, going on to show, meanwhile Ferrari trying to TP out, Ferrari gets away with the Aegis, smoke is used, not actually gonna smoke anyone up, there are heroes in the fight, down goes the Prophet, Tinker escapes, Prophet, the only casualty for a Lycan ult and a Pan ult so far, they go on to face. One more zip by PCT, or should I say his first zip, but Shackle, look at the damage! PCT just explode! Oh, that's a problem, and Faith is gonna survive. One for one for a Pan ult, that is not a good trade. And EIG just looking very strong here with the defensive capabilities. A Panda ult oh, and a, uh, and a, uh... Lycan though, and Lycan just got shut down, it was a disruption into a Sprout on the ground, so he spawned into the Sprout, Shackle the shot to follow, that Lycan man, without BKB, he is gonna do absolutely nothing, Necrobook still though, gonna provide a lot of aura and burst damage in the fight, so that's not too bad, but again, they went for Faith to start a team fight, uh, Lycan was right on him, but, I mean, it's just not enough, Stormstrike came in by himself, also, cut him to his doom, because Shackle shots was waiting for him. <laughs> Who needs disruption, really, when you have YYF play Windrunner? Forget trying to keep your teammates alive, although we did see it there. Just shackle up the storm as soon as he zips in, and PCT will take a fall. His timing wasn't even bad there. He waited patiently until his team had already gone in, trying to find the right moment. The problem is, he's so damn squishy, you dive that tower, you just die. And that's going to further set back an Orca that's already very much so delayed. And here we go, bottom lane. 2,700 gold up on Ferrari. Man, he is not far off a hex if he wants to build it. That probably will be his next choice. And they're gonna pressure the tier two. Yeah, as I'm as they're pushing the tier two, I wanna again, LD if you can pu push up that uh, total goal earn graph. Right now the lower half of the five players are Shadow Demon, Venomancer, Chen, 
Wimiter and Enchantress. I just feel like the Dire Hero overall are a lot more effective without item, right? Again, we, we see the Shackle shots from Wimiter, you don't need any item for that, but she does have an item on top of her. She has a mech. Again, Shadow Demon Disruption, we've been seeing a lot of crazes about that. One of the most important stuff for IG. And Chuan, don't, don't underestimate Chuan, he's actually one of the highest DPS heroes in the game right now. Impedus doing a massive amount of damage. You can even pop his treads on intelligence if you want to do it. Switch it during the middle of team fight. In between Force Half and, in, and, and uh, his intrads, he is actually putting out at least 150, 160 damage pure. That's absolutely insane for you know, support here. You know, the thing about it is there's so much setup for him and so much lockdown between the shackle shot. And we haven't talked about it at all, really, but the Sprout is really he neutering Lycan as well attack. as Panda in a lot of these fights. You know, Panda could drop his ult and somewhat deal with it, but Lycan, uh, no quality blade on him this entire game. I, I've seen multiple times Lamb is held in place, even if it's just for a second or two. That plus the right. four stats, the win run. So many ways for IG to kite here. I think that's really what we're seeing is that having melee carries, Radiant's if you don't have amazing lockdown attack. across the board, they can be kited in these team Radiant fights. Here we go, Tinker gonna teleport in. Looks like they're gonna start that slow siege once again. Panda with a blink, can he actually come in though? You talked about the ability to cancel the blink with the marching machine as well as the rocket. I think he's finding it difficult to initiate. But he's gonna try it anyway. Four first half, right back out for 430. He's gonna get mecked up, toss up in the air. Zoe trying to TP out. Is he gonna make it? Yes, oh, no. he is. Oh no. He makes it. Now they would have gone Ferrari, but Ferrari has the. A no, sorry, the Aegis died. Never mind that. He will go down. And they get one kill, they do get an important kill on Ferrari. Uh, but one more blink on the high ground, they want Faith. Faith will probably go down, this is looking like a decent fight. PCT zips in, KSing that one up, and he will get the kill. That's gonna bring an Orchid just about complete for him. Uh, he didn't lose the Aegis, it actually just expired right before that fight. Pretty unfortunate timing for IG. And he goes, Lamb, Lamb wants that Roshan! And Schwan says, nope, you're not getting that. TPM from Joe, not gonna find him. Lamb. <laughs> Look at like it when he runs, Radiant's his arms move so fast. He is really hustling and bustling here, and he will be fine. Definitely the, the Usain Bolt of Defense of the Ancients. He is uh, getting out there. <laughs> I love it, and, man. Uh, I love it. Well, he's, they're still looking after him right now. His Hazer is running out. Pops his ultimate shackle shot. That one's not going to latch. Laser rockets. Yeah, that's going to bring him down. My god, they track down a like it. It's time to go for Roche. Zol thinks so. He's trying to pour it in. But thinks better of it. They really need this like in the fight. He has buyback, but I say you go for Roche, try and force it out, because without him, really, yeah. there's no panda ult. How are you going to win this fight? Uh, we've already seen they can't push against March. They really can't walk into the pit either against it. Ferrari, 900 gold off on him, picks up the ultimate orb, just trying to tank up. He will be going for the sight device, almost certainly. And he's not far off, and here we go. Four staff number two on the way for YWF. This is looking worse and worse for Ehome as the items accumulate. It's something we talked about. Once they get up these four items, it'll just be so far for Ehome to find their opening. And Roche, being worked down, it's taking a while. But it looks like Ehome don't really want to contest it. They obviously know what's going on at this point, but they really just can't walk in here. One thing that you do want to watch out for if your IG is like Storm Zip. He, I mean, right now there's no instant stuns coming from IG, so they gotta be massively trying to click on that Aegis and take it. Storm Zero can always, with a sight that the Tornado's giving, like he could zip in and, and just go man's deep. And if you see the PCT right now, drops his TP scroll on the ground, he's ready. He's ready, and let's see how good his timing is. Stand back, he's zipping right in, he's going for it, and he does not get it in time. Oh, no. oh a little bit this time. Nice try though, Nature Prophet picks up the Aegis. I think they wanted Tinker to get that one, but... That would no, have been so that would have been possibly the most epic Woe Dota S play I've ever seen if he pulls it up. Because not as not only is he still in the Aegis, but he's also being sent back at the same time, so he'll be absolutely fine there. Uh, not even having right. to try to zip out, but it fails in the end. That would have been so incredible, but just missed time he had a touch. Uh, and if they had the Lycan Wolves there, they might have been able to scout it, although realistically that march killed everything off. So they give away an Aegis. Well, oh, they, they had they had Lycan Wolves there actually, but uh oh, because in oh, okay. They, whoever, I think Shadow Demon had a gen and Enchantress just uh, enchanted it. So actually, they had uh, Invis Lycan Wolves. Can I just, for IG I want to point out, by the way, Lamb has an ultimate orb. Um, yeah, is this going to be a Manta? Is it going to be a Scythe of Vice? They really do need Lockdown. So I don't think Scythe would be a bad pick at all. Uh, we'll have to see. Where do you think he's going with this? Lamb has an ultimate orb. I, I, yeah, the Lycan. It has to be a Hex, though. It has to be a Hex. Mid lane. Big blink in by Panda. Joe, locked in place, not going to actually be disabled in the Sprout, he's not TPing out, he will go down, but the Aegis expunged, 
basically for nothing. Missiles flying through onto PCT. They get the Aegis for a panel. Not a bad trade, not an amazing one. One more zip in by PCT, but he's just stalling. KJ, look at the sprouts, but no, a great blink wave by him. Great reaction. Still, disruption and shackle at the same time. Shackle not gonna hit. Doesn't matter. He goes down. And he home, losing a hero. They're gonna be 4v5. The buyback forced out. One more zip in by Storm. He wants to go. Silence on the fade. Out of mana again. The mana manager, perhaps not the best. Shackled. Lamb and PCT held in place together and take her in the front lines. Trying to kill off MMY here. Four staff up again. Rearm. Now Lycan changes targets. Will this Lycan find a kill? Four staff down to the low ground. What a troll by Ferrari. And he's going to escape. And PCT out of mana. Like you said, the mana management has just not been perfect. And when you go for Orchid, you need to be perfect. He's going to zip away. Will he survive here? He'll, he'll be okay. Oh, he was able to do a lot of work uh, with his first charge of the Monetier 2. He's gonna get snipe here. Uh, what a start for a GE home. I mean, we talked about how, how of an uphill climb they have to get in the late game stage, but they've been fighting very well, forcing the Zoe to use his Aegis, getting an extra kill on Shadow Demon. They actually are focused on Shadow Demon every single fight. They have identified that is the most important target. Uh, the four staff in the beginning to really survive, make a faith for survive a little bit longer. Storm Stir waits a little bit and zips, zips in a second time. And that is going to do it. But again, eventually, Faith will just be tanking enough. There's going to be more and more Force F. That is going to get harder and harder as the game goes on for them to pick up Faith repeatedly. Well, it's a 4k gold advantage for the Dire. They lost their Aegis. They're getting very close to multiple sites of Vice of Ferrari. On uh, Joe. Uh, this is why we have had one. No, he's got his Force Staff, though. And Chawan with the Force Staff up. Having a lot of HP. Can Eho farm this one out? Can they turtle it out? Or are they still operating on the clock? I, I believe you home still operating on the clock. Again, uh, can I forget about Enchantress? Definitely a semi-carry by end of game. You can see that she's picking up a point booster. Multiple four staff will make Melee's uh, life go crazy. I mean, for the next 20 minutes, I, I favor IG as they're picking up uh, uh, hexes, as they're picking up more utility-based items. Intelligence is where you really want to be uh, in this kind of semi-late game situation. But if it goes you know, for 40 more minutes, then the, the situation kind of changes. I don't, I don't foresee this game go for 40 more minutes, though. That would be, <laughs> since you said that, it probably will go for 50 more minutes, just to serve us from. But uh, yeah, I don't see it going that long either. We'll see. IG applying constant pressure. And here's the beauty of their lineup, is they have a Tinker and a Prophet on the Dire squad. Not to mention Windrunner, who's pretty good split pushing. So Roche will probably be there as the next one. Unless they lose a fight here, we'll get the back step by Lamp. KJ smoked up, has not been spotted, able to blink in, looking for the opening. It's got to be just perfect. Watch out for the disruption. He gets revealed. Blink, clap on two. All is popped immediately. They zip in by PCT. They won't show. They will get him. But is that going to be it? It looks like it will be. No, look at the micro. Chuan thrown up in the air. Held in place. And I think they're going to get him. Four step away. Gale hits on two. Another shackle from YYM. Goodness gracious. Look at the damage from Lamb. The AoE, the right clicks too much from the Storm as well. Buyback from somebody, I believe. Brewmaster dropping low. Ferrari, the long range snipe, trying to TP out, will not escape. He goes down, and the sprout of the lamb. Lamb will take a fall. Blood being spilled everywhere. Three for three. The clap, killing off King J. King J sent back to base. Gem on the floor. Chuan will pick it up. Not denied, but the necro creep in time. At the end of the day, was it a four for four? I want to say it was with a buyback here or there. Yeah, it was a buyback on both sides. Zoe bought back, died again after the buyback, so he's not going to have any time soon. Despite us still having 1,500 gold in the bank, man, it's still the rich. And, I mean, I was predicting that the IG is going to have the advantage in the next couple of 10 minutes, but Ehom just wrestling right back. I mean, they are actually a lot stronger. The initiation from the Panda was absolutely sick. They focused on Zoe. Stormster is zipped in with an immediate silence, immediate pickoff. But Stormster has also been dying in these fights, so he's not getting... Uh, you know, too many item uh, progressions. Tinker, Tinker, did he buy back? I just looked over him. Yeah, he did buy back. So that delays the sight of Vice, but I would expect by the next team fight, uh, by the time it breaks out, he'll have it. And that could be the yep. difference maker. If Ferrari is quick with his fingers, which, goodness gracious, we know he can be, uh, especially when he's playing heroes like Invoker, then he can instantly sight either the Panda or the Lycan before they can actually do any real damage. But I think the most crucial one would be that Panda that we've been discussing. If he gets off that site before the ult is dropped, Ehom will be in a world of trouble. To me, Ehom do very well and they win that fight, but the problem for them is they have to keep on playing perfectly. I feel like it's a lot easier for IG to win a fight right now. 
And also, that fight is dependent on the Panda Ultimate being on. Look at that, look, I just just lost a fight. They're just like, yeah, we'll take this tier 2, no problem. That's because that uh, tier 2 tower, I mean, that Panda Ultimate is nowhere near being on cooldown. And IG, because of that, taking the tier 2, now getting ready to push out all the creep waves to make sure they have a good chance of taking the next Roshan. Wow, 3.5k up on King J. He could go for the Aghanim Scepter. I almost feel like getting something else would be better. Aghanim's always a great item on Panda, but this game, I mean, his ult's already doing a pretty good job. Maybe you want to go for a utility on like Scythe Device. Nope, it will be Aghanim's. Give you a little extra HP. Try to make sure you can get the ult off. Never a bad choice on Panda, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they went for some unorthodox items. Uh, on, you know, we're already seeing Lycan maybe going for the Scythe Device. So for Panda, maybe that would be his next choice. Uh, you know, Salkara is a more common option. We'll see where they want to go. Lamb, 2,500 gold. So Ehome are getting close to that next set of items as well. But they're going to try and push bottom now. This is quite bold. Everybody on IG pretty much here. I know, they will back off. Yeah, they saw three heroes, three, four heroes behind the towers. Like, yeah, maybe not. Not at least uh, with our <laughs> full team. Uh, we do see Venomancer getting some farm. He's actually level 13 for a Venomancer in a game like this. 3, 5, and 14 for his score. Getting rather well. Actually level up Poison Sting, which is pretty curious. Because Poison Sting, not something you want to level up in the mid to late game. Perhaps we picked it up earlier. But for now, Cypher Vice is finished on Tinker. Uh, Lamb, 2700 gold. So if he's going for Hex, 800 gold away. For 900 gold away. Uh, is this time for IG to push? Or are they, are they just defending for more Hexes? You, you know, they probably could win a fight right now. But they've knocked down all the outer towers. They have the dire advantage. So if you just want to go for Roach, which this time will drop the cheese. Uh, it's, it's probably not a bad way to go about it. The one downside... The one downside is you're buying time for Lamb to farm up, which will probably be his Hex. Uh, you're also buying time for Storm to complete his BKB. And that's one thing we haven't discussed, is how good will BKB be in this game? Blocks the Impetus, blocks the Shackle. Uh, the the S Shadow Demon Ultimate will be pretty useless against it, as Storm doesn't care about his move speed generally. Uh, if Storm's able oh, to man, get BKB, BKB off, could be a big game B changer here. BKB is going to be absolutely perfect, at least for the first couple of charges. One of the more you know discouraging thing about BKB is you're essentially buying 4k item for like roughly three team fights. Oh my god, massive disconnects. Hopefully they can reconnect back. BKB is one of those items, especially on here like Lycan, who needs it for chasing, needs it for just simply surviving. I mean, once you go down to that 7 second, 6 second BKB, it's just not going to be reliable anymore. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I feel this game will be decided by a couple climactic team fights, but I guess the big thing about it is we've seen players before pop BKB and then just decide to back off, or they get caught out, they have to waste it to escape. And that's where it could really come down to hurt you. Plus, if the BKB is down, it's not just how long will the duration be, like you're talking about, which is a great point. It's also, is that BKB available when you need it? Uh, for IG, all their stuff that they want to use multiple times in team fights, like Shackle Shot, the Hex on Tinker, that's pretty much always going to be there. Whereas the BKB is right. a one-shot deal, so he's got to make that make the usages count, and he's got to make sure it's available when he needs to use it. Yeah, sometimes you see a shackle flying in the air, and you pop the BKB, and the other team says, yeah, "Okay, we'll we'll back off for now, and we'll come back in like 20 seconds when your BKB is down," and that becomes extremely extremely relevant. Essentially, putting in 4,000 gold for you know plus 10 strength, which is <laughs> not exactly where you want to be. I see we've acquired a lot of new viewers. Uh, welcome to everybody who's tuning in now. This is game number two of eHome versus IG. This is the round of four of the semifinals in a single elimination bracket. IG took game number one pretty convincingly, I might add. So if they win this game, they move on to the grand finals, facing off against either CLG or EG. You can find all the brackets and links to all the previous games at DotaCommentaries.com. Click on World Tour, and the brackets will be there. You can also click on the matches in the brackets to get direct access to the VODs for every single game that's been played so far in the tournament. This is our first semifinal. We do have one more to go. CLG versus EG. I believe it is now scheduled for Saturday, along with our Grand Finals. I will also mention, if you didn't already know, the in-game pass is still available for Dota TV. $3.99, and yes, the tournament is winding down, uh, but there's so many great games that have happened over the past month. You can get all of those. For, I, really, it amounts to a couple of cents per game, maybe 10, 20 cents uh, per game played. So to me, it's a pretty fantastic deal. And by the way, did I mention 15 of these teams will be attending the International in some fashion? Although a few have dropped out, or one, I should say, has dropped out. They still played a couple of matches, and man, I kind of want this to go for game, to a Game 3, so in that sense, I am rooting for Ehome here, but it's looking looking pretty tough right now. I mean, again, they have shown that they can win team fights, so they should never be counted out. 
Um, and I mean, they get they're getting some big items like in very close to the Hex Storm Strait or get close to that BKB like we were talking about. And that uh, that Shen looking to work for a uh, Axe Scepter again on a on a different level though. You're not getting hexes, and the enemy team is so right. that's let alone that's kind of the big thing. Let alone multiple hexes, and especially a hex on Tinker, which is in theory that's, perma hex. That's like two hexes, three perhaps. <laughs> Well, it's Ferrari, man. It might be ten. <laughs> I'm not sure it was really ten. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm, it's... I'm. I'm kidding. I'm just being a fanboy. But uh, X greater than two, though. Greater than two. There's the potent. That's the thing about IG to me is Ehome have one big burst in the team fights with the Panda ult going up, the Lycan charging in, the single uh, silence from the storm on the BKB. They have to win that team fight within about eight to ten seconds. At least get a couple kills. And even if they do, there's a profit on the field. There's a tinker. They don't have buyback now, but by the time Roche responds, they probably will. And that's that means it's already a 7v5 team fight, even before they get Roche. If they get it, it's probably a 9v5. Oh, it's going to be tough for Ehom. I really do think IG has the upper hand here, but like you said, Ehom has had some fantastic fights. If they continue to play flawlessly, they can win. For anyone who's wondering what's going on, it looks like Ehom is having some connection issues. Their VPN uh, is suffering a little bit, but they are hopefully going to get that sorted out soon. At least I didn't pause in the middle of an epic team fight. I will say that much. <laughs> I love it when they do do that. I mean, the players hate it, but like, okay, let's let's look at what's going to happen and try to predict exactly how the team fight goes. <laughs> oh, Atri, always trolling in all chat. I think Atri knows these Chinese teams better than anyone else in the scene, really, uh, aside from other Chinese players, I guess. <laughs> uh, so. I mean, what are we looking at in terms of a gold difference? I actually haven't checked that yet. It would be interesting. 5,400 gold, 54,000 gold for the Radiant. 59, almost 60,000. Is really, it working for you? The graph is not working. No, for I go. if you go to gold and XP, uh, you can just see the total gold earned for both teams uh, next to the Radiant and the Dire. You know, the, ah, you know, I see. Yeah, so that's sort of a workaround. Not as good as the graph, but 6k difference. Really good by Ehome, considering... Especially, there's a profit with a Midas and a Tinker. These guys can flash farm like absolute chaps. But they're still hiding in there, man. Well, I mean, if you look at Total Goal Earn, the farm chart is definitely pretty much so in the favor of the Radiant, actually, I want to say. Oh my god. Oh no. I mean, oh. there's two farmer that's leading the way, Tinker and uh, Profit, respectively. But the farm spread out on the Radiant, perhaps actually working a little bit better. At least I think so. Well, the other thing is the Dire have that big tower bench, and they've got multiple Roshans. Without it, dare I say, Ehome would be leading in terms of gold here. Yeah, yeah. That's two Roshans, plus three tower advantage. It would be dead even, if not an advantage for Ehome. Oh boy, that Dire advantage. Sometimes, sometimes you really just wish you were on the Dire. It's going to be a Manta, so he's not going... Interesting, he's not going for the Hex. This gives you that split push, but really, are you ever going to get that split push against Taker of Profit? I guess if they win a fight, then he can mow down the racks a lot quicker. I, I is it is it an attempt to debuff Laser? Is it an attempt to debuff a Chance Slow when he's in... Well, yeah. I mean, I think the Laser, that's a good point. Does it remove Soul Catcher as well? I actually don't know for that one. I am I don't think so. It can't. I mean, if you do it properly, it could pop you out of Enchant. I mean, not Enchant. Pop you out of Sprout. Right. It just seems it seems calling Blaze just infinitely better solution if he <laughs> really cares about Sprout though. It's just it's very odd to see it the way this game is progressing. I just it's it's easy for me to say as a spectator, but it really feels like Ehome needs that extra lockdown. They're so uh, if they have a scythe on him right now, a tanker and profit very killable if you can just hold them in place for a few seconds. Right. Uh, and then they can't use the four stabs, they can't use their hexes. But for the moment, I guess his plan is just to pop everything, like including his ultimate in, in the beginning of the fight, and says, "Yeah, you could stun me, you could shackle me. I still literally have an army right. that can just right click you down." Shackle Again, this. the, the, the <laughs> real issue is how how do they how do they keep that person locked down for the right clicks to go you know go in? Oftentimes, I would say it comes from the storm, who maybe would have something like a hex, but he's opted for orchid and now BKB, and well, the orchid made a lot of sense that he died a few times and it really slowed it down. I don't disagree with any of the item choices PCT has made. It's just the rate that he's getting them. They're not going to have that additional lockdown. It, it's got to come down to KJ, who was pretty much perfect in the last fight. Hitting two at the clap, the ult to follow. 
Uh, and then good lockdown from him. That's just put so much pressure on KJ to hit a perfect ult. Which, I mean, so far he has been doing. And it's not the fact that he hits ult, his, his micro afterwards, right? Right, right. We focus on the Prophet. New Prophet was going to die. Immediate windwalk on the Storm to, you know, go ahead to pick up an Enchantress. And just just the exceptional micro that he's been, you know, dom uh, showing us is, I mean, perhaps that, that's why he's playing the Panda. And no, no one else is on this team. It, we're getting to that late game for Ehome, where, like you said, the clock is still kind of running. There's so many utility items up on IG. These are melee carries in the end. Sure, you can have an army, but even that army is pretty much all melee, uh, aside from that one rage Necronomicon warrior, which is nice, but it's not killing anybody by itself at this point in the game. Uh, and they can be kited, whether it's wind run, whether it's shackle shots to lock you down, whether it's the multiple sites, the four stats. That clock is still ticking for Ehome, and it's all about this Roshan, which is respawning in about a minute. But here we go, Lumi. We're back into the game. Uh, I feel like I've had a chance to collect myself, really assess how things are going. Hopefully the players have as well. And for Ehome, they're smoked up, but they're just sort of baiting here. <laughs> and the IG are not going to take this bait. Five heroes off the map. They might have even spotted the smoke with this ward in the jungle. Even if they didn't spot it, they are using their map sense. And they're yeah, not they're like, yeah, you could, you could fight, you, know, you could bait that like it all you want. That's four heroes not really doing too much. We'll just farm. Uh, at this point here, again, they, they care about the Equilibrium. They care about Roshan that's coming up. So it's important for Prophet to keep on pushing, pushing, hobbling. He's got the Hex, as well as 2k go in the bank. I think that 2k mostly will be safe towards buyback, at least for the early get-go. And Dire, uh, protecting that tier 1 tower, very, very important for Roshan engagement. But even if they lose this tier 1, tier 2, it will be still available. So no big deal, even if they lose this. This is the... Oh, here we go. Another smoke. Was it spotted? No, but they realized something is up. Good positioning all around. Faith on the front lines. There's so many four stats, so try and live even if they initiate him. And if he doesn't, no big deal. He's only your shadow even blinking. Clap on two. Perfect. They won faith the silence as well. No, they back off PCT. Not opting to go and maybe worried about the shackle instead. They go into Ferrari. Ferrari does hit the buyback just barely. 50 gold available. Hold buy back very quickly. Oh, uh, someone just TP'd out. Show barely escapes. The panda ult used, the lycan ult used. Shackle gonna latch on two. Oh, look at me, the shackle from YYF. Oh, showing Chuan how it's done. Will it be enough? Look at the damage from Lycan. Chuan, four step away, still kiting quite well. It's Prophet who's caught out a long way from the team. Will it be enough? King J, shackle on two again! YYF, are you kidding me right now? One more zip. Somehow Ehome is winning this fight, it seems, even with multiple two hero shackles. Just not quite enough. One more zip would get another kill. Lamb, the ult pulls down. He can fight again, dodges the shackle. YYF out of gas, probably gonna take a fall here. Will there be a disruption? There is under the tower. The power shot. Joe, four step away. Is it enough? Why am I up dropping low? Another four step. One more right click. Where's the zip PCT? All out of gas. A flick in the clap. King J. Oh man, what a panda performance in this fight. They're going to get four. And with that, probably the Roshan too. So many buybacks as well. Oh. Whoa, IG Fave is trying to be the hero by himself. Somebody gotta tell him he definitely does not have the spells. No, the Kodian, he does have Purge, but he definitely does not have the money to go for it right now. I should say that the, the Dire Squad, they're just losing because they have no damage. I mean, they have all the lockdown in the world. We talked about the Hexes and how three Hexes is everything. Enchantress by herself is just not doing enough. They always pick off uh, the, the Tinker in the middle of the team fight, or the start of the team fight, so he never gets to set up the, the multiple layers of the marching machine. Where's actually the damage coming in from the Dire Squad? I think that's really the key. You know, maybe this is where that Prophet, you know, it's <laughs> right now, maybe he's wishing he had a Desolator at MKB. Even a Sokka has uh, to help deal with the Lycan's physical right clicks. It's, I think the other issue is it's not just the fact they don't have great damage items. They have decent damage, but they're also just running for their lives from Lamb in these team yeah. fights, so. How do you do damage when you're not right clicking? You don't really. Yep, and of course Storm. Even if let's say Prophet gets a uh, you know Desolator or MKB or something like that, Storm has the option to just go right in for the Prophet. Like no matter what your positioning Radiant's is in the team fight, the beauty of Storm is he will find you. IG definitely not giving up uh, in terms of the game right now. They're very very far away from actually losing the game. But Ehom has been winning multiple team fights in a row. And again, we say that IG has good late game. Only if they get the Hex, and if you're losing every single team fight, you don't have to go for the Hex. Wow, look at King J. Filthy rich now. 3,200 gold on him. PCT finished his BKB. Uh, Lycan, what does he have? Another 1,000 gold in the bank. Has Lamb purchased anything? I feel like there's got to be somebody on the Courier. Where is that Courier, by the way? 
It's dead. Oh, it died it's in the fight. For six more seconds. So oh, okay. we'll see in just a bit if he had he had purchased something big before he died. Although no. I don't think so. Yeah, it's empty. Oh, oh Team 5 breaking out on the top lane here. Storm is zipping forward of Windrunner. Hexes against PCT. It looks like they're going to try to focus him down. Big Bad Ligon on the on the move. And I do believe they're going to just allow Faith to feed. Yeah, Faith is going to just run away from his team. And his team is on retreat. They should escape, but Ehome just finding the pickoffs right now, and IG sort of afraid to team fight. But this is another option they have, what we're seeing right now. Try and go for the split push, stall the game out. I don't know, you know, it's starting to look like maybe they can't take this late because of the, the lack of damage, the lack of a frontline tank. But if they want to stall, these two are the best of the business to do it. Hold up. I'm not sure if they want to stall, but, you know, to survive, they have to stall. I think that's the thing here for Zo, and uh, you know he's he's farming up. I wonder what his next item choice is, is, and I think that will really show like how this game's going. If he's gonna go defensive item like a four staff or a Yule scepter, then you know like they're not gonna win in the long run. They just want to get any item to survive. But if you get some a real DPS item, MKB, uh, Maelstrom, sometimes we see profits get. Uh, that top is lane. really a shot on the top lane here, though. Oh no, YYF. No shackle would hit there. He needs like an AOE shackle for he that. He does a buyback. I it's just amazing how everybody always has buyback in this game when they need it. Uh, something you don't see. Uh, oftentimes, your know, players will go for the big item, but in the Chinese scene, they really do prioritize buyback over completing items most of the time. And IG, they've had in every fight, it hasn't been enough. And now the Radiant, they have buyback on a couple of heroes, but PCT also with the Aegis and the Cheese on Lycan. It's the 75 now maybe going the other way, and that's the thing for, for Zhou as well as Tinker is I, I just don't think they're going to get those next items anytime soon because at this point you have hacks, like you, you have enough that you can't, there's no justification for not saving for five Right? Yeah, uh, on the Radiant side, Axis finish on Chen, Storm, BKB is up. It's been up for a while, has a thousand gold. Two thousand gold here on Lycan, uh, and Panda also going in for a hex, I think. It could be a Lincoln Sphere too, uh, against all the hexes out there, but I, I think I think getting a hex of his own is just you know vastly better. That's gonna be so brutal. Blink in, clap, choose your hex immediately. Uh, his uh, KJ has just had this is a game where I I feel like Panda normally would not be very effective because there's just so many ways to kite him, so many ways to bait out that blink clap ultimate, but KJ's timing has just been pristine. For like 15, 20 minutes now, how many games have we seen where Panda drops his ult, the enemy team just runs away, and nothing really comes of it? Or maybe you get one support. Right. But every time KJ uses his ult, multiple heroes dying, towers being claimed, Roshan being claimed, big objectives achieved. Late game Panda working out this time around. Oftentimes we see it doesn't. Oftentimes it's kind of an afterthought. It's like, oh, that, that hero eats so much farm and doesn't give you so much in return, but... This one is giving all the dividends right back to the uh, IG's, uh, to the e home squad. Again, 3,700 go here on Zo. You blink on Zo and his farm just goes up. Insane. Stormster is zipping really far away. He sees the Tinker. He's going to get the pull. He does have the pull. Double damage. That is going to do a BKB gets Pop as well. Lycan Wolf galloping afar to get the KS. He does. Meanwhile, though, uh, King Jay. Might be forced to use his ult. That he will. Will he be able to get a kill on Ferrari? The smoke! Oh, great play! <laughs> Faith having the. You see this a lot in the early game. I, I know I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of players do it. But to have that smoke available for the Panda ultimate at this stage of the game, very impressive play. So they bait out that Panda ult, and are they going to fight him? Maybe they will. But he's still. God, this Agonim's Panda ult does last for an eternity and a half. He should be okay. Yep. Um, we saw the immediate buyback here from the. Tinker, I think perhaps IG wants to make a go right now. Uh, this is a very, very awkward moment where Ehome does not have the Panda ult. Uh, but, I mean, because of the Axe Scepter, it's going to be back up soon. If, he, if the if the Dire wants to make a go, they got to do it right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's down like for about a minute. But yeah, it's just to get to the base, is probably going to take 40 seconds. And I, I think because of that last fight and also the fact they have Aegis Cheese up, I'm not sure how re reliant they really are on the Panda ult now. Uh, just because Lycan's gonna be able to chase probably for two full lives in the fight. Oh, the zip in! They're gonna get faced right away. Not a good start to the team fight. Maybe not. No, definitely will be. The, the Orchid's doing the last damn. Chuan's gonna try to TP out YYF. He's gonna get scouted out and he should be fine. Lycan, I'm not gonna do too much as to say that. Necrobo gets popped. Crits after crits after crits. Stormster zip. Look at the zip from afar. Gets hexed. No mana on the storm. Oh, Zo sprouts himself in shackle shot on the middle of everything. Zo's gonna go down. I think with Zoe and 
I mean, just about everybody getting repeatedly picked it off. It was, you know, Faith sometimes, it's Enchantress another time. I just don't think they have enough gold to go all the way. They're farming a lot of gold, but they're losing a lot more. Yeah, there's no, there's no clear initiator. There's no hero that just jumps in for IG. They have a lot of initiation, but they don't have a hero that just wants to be in the front lines and zips like halfway across the map like PCT. You also have to credit Ehome's warding because that's how they've been getting these big zips. There was a ward yeah. over here towards the ancients that spotted out Tinker and got everything started. And here they are on the brink of forcing game three. Yeah, yeah for the viewer that's just joined us, IG up again. Although, uh, let's see how long they're going to be up again, because right now we have Ehome poking on the high ground. Here comes that march! Oh, man. This might take a while, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's a pipe. That's going to you know block a lot of charges. Oh, no, the layers are out. Here we go. The focus storms are zipping inwards, so it's kind of scare people away. The glyph is forced out. Power shots, AoE being used. Panda Ultimate just going to get popped to scare everybody away and going to focus on the racks. Not a bad way to use a Panda Ultimate, especially this late in the game. March Machine layer still being built up, but Lamb says, I don't care. I just do not care. And here's where the Manta style becomes such a good item. They just mow down this uh, top racks, or the bot racks, without relative any kind of commitment. Pops the ultimate, and it's going to just peace out. They might get MMY here, maybe the Panda, but really they shouldn't get anything else beyond that. KJ hexed up. Will they be able to get multiple kills here? That's the big question. Sprout, Shackle, look at the coordination here from Joe, as well as YYF. Perfect timing, the Shackle flying it even before the Sprout had been placed. They get the Panda, but that's a Panda who already used this ult. And still, I e home, they get the tier, they get the tier 3 tower, they get the Rex, and they get out mostly without losing anything. Still have the cheese, still have the Aegis after that fight. Yep. Tinker adds a Ghost Scepter to his item pool, adds up their finish on the Enchantress. Um, any other big item? Nature probably goes for the Manta style. Okay, so this is the item. Uh, they, they really want to DPS. I'm not sure whether Manta is the best way to start it up, but it does give him a little bit of survivability as well. Zoe's still fighting on, not giving up. Well, it you gotta, also... You gotta... Gotta credit him I mean, for that. Love the spirit. Yeah, yeah definitely. It, it gives him a way to deal with the Orchid silence as well, but that's really not what's getting him killed. It's that zip-in and the pull that starts things off, and it won't help you with the pull. Oh, here we go. Hex, this is probably gonna be an Aegis down. Definitely will be. In comes Lamb. How quickly can he find the kills? Went for a Reaver, so big at this point. Lamb just absolutely massive Ferrari with the Ghost Scepter. Four staffs away left and right, like he doesn't care. He keeps on chasing the zip in, the defensive disruption, the silence, the shackle, not gonna latch. Joe running for his life. Lamb trying to do the big right clicks, but hexed up once, hexed up a second time. The demonic purge holding him in place. He will go down. Look at the chain stun, and all of a sudden, they force a fight without Panda after Storm getting picked off. Aegis down. Two heroes dead, the TP forward, Storm completely out of mana, is there a hex that is available? If Joe, if, if PCT dies here, this could be absolutely huge, he will die I believe. One couple more auto attacks, there's your purge, he goes down. And that uh -oh. means, no buyback! No buyback! Venomancer buys back here, gonna be porting right to the tower to start setting up wards. He's got a couple of seconds, there's the creep wave pushing in. Storm Spirit, no buyback like you mentioned. Lycanthrope, no go for buyback. Oh god. And there's a long way from the bot creep to actually push in. I don't even know where I should push out the creep wave. And perhaps the Wrath of Nature doing a very, very good job. 60 seconds is what they got to go right in. We have Entron getting the region. Oh, that's a, such a big pickup here. He's gonna be back to full mana and use every bit of mana to get all of his Impetus hits in. And here we go, IG threatening to win this game right now off a slight mistake on Mihom. There is, is a insane. There is a glyph, two point. Oh, Panda, oh, he's just to try and slow this push down. And well, he might do that. But look at the Fire Panda, just explodes. The Earth Panda just dying to march, which does affect Magic Beard units. Uh, does the damage to them. It's, it might die here, he's gotta be very careful with it. Oh, that Earth Panda's gonna die. It's only the Wind Panda left. 20 seconds to go, that clock ticking, we talked about a clock ticking off Dave, but now it's those respawn timers, is IG really going to get a counter rack, hex up on MMY, look at the damage, those imps, oh Chawan just slapping him down, MMY takes a fall, right before the respawns happen, they need the racks though, that has to be the objective here, March beats them constantly, Ferrari sprouted in place by his own teammate for a second, four step away, they do it, they get the racks, and now Roshan's back up. What a time to get that mid lane pushed in. Oh my god, you are never out of the game. Lose three team fights in a row and get a pickoff. 
IG's right back at this. Another 3600 go here for the profit. 4000 go on the Tinker, but the most important prize of all is that Roshan. How quickly can Radiant push out on the mid lane, and how quickly can Dire bring down that Aegis? It is going to be happening right now. I think IG's setting up a bait. I think they're trying to set up bait. No, they're going to back off for now. Perhaps they're going to use Roche as a bait and try to get a pick off. But again, here comes the big smoke for King J. No ultimate. You got to keep in mind, no ultimate because you have to use it for the base defense. Roshan taking some big damage. It's due to have to have a gem. Roshan coming in. And here comes the lamp. How big is the focus here? Zoe gets focused. He gets disrupted. No big deal here. Faith now gets focused. Force app out. Force app out again. Faith still alive. A lot of resources devoted. King J is going to get Impetus down. Chuan, big damage here. They're going to force the storm back. Brewmaster buys back. But now Wolf forms out. Shackle shot again. Against QQQ attacking up on the high ground, no miss chance actually benefiting. And now at this point, with two heroes out, no Chen buys back as well. Wow, massive amount of buybacks, but still no Panda Ultimate, no Wolf Form Ultimate, at least we're not for nine more seconds. I do believe that Dyer has to buy, uh, go back. Uh oh. Faith doesn't have buyback himself. If IG have to back, this is a team with the like, and they're gonna get Roshan at like 10 seconds here. Lamb goes into the pit, and the beauty of this lineup is Lamb can just sit here. 4,000 HP, by the way. They're going for the rack straight, top lane. Uh, well, it's only a Tigger, but they are trying to force some TPs back. This is the split push power. Lamb held in place. The Ips, look at them, don't care about the armor. Lamb, two shackles. Two hill shackled again. YYF. Oh my goodness. But now Chawad. Big damage on him, the pan ult locking him down. Now they go on to Joe. Will Joe be able to escape? A zip in a long way from TCT. Sorb, Taker joins the fight. Ferrari, perhaps a blunder by him. Not staying top and not pushing it. Profit buys back. Tinker has the buyback. He uses it. Are they really gonna fight on? The pan ult still around. God, that agonist just lasts so long. Another zip by PCT. Soul catcher going out onto PCT. PCT will take a fall. Faith. Dopping low as well, Enchant just thrown up in the air, the big damage dealer disabled for this fight, King J, another two hero shackle, YYF if they don't win, I can't believe it, he's hitting so many, it looks like the buybacks, they might be enough, another zip in by PCT, Chawad dropping low, look at the damage, the sustainability, that Lycan ult's back, and Lamb right clicking his way to victory, oh the buyback of Prophet already used, he can't buy back again, Taker available to go fight, but really he can't join this, this is going to be Aegis and Cheese for Ehome, but mid lane pushing in, top lane pushing in, they're going to have to back off and defend, I still think IG have a chance, a shackle on two in the pit, they can't fight this Roche anymore, there's just no way. Right? Well, why about zip in here against the, to take the Aegis? No, he's silenced up. He's force staffing onto the low ground. He's trying to run on the right side. I'm not sure he's going to make it. Lamb pops the ultimate for the third time in this fight. Why have not going to make it out there. And that should be it for the Aegis. And I cannot imagine. I really cannot imagine that IG makes a comeback. But they made a comeback earlier, right? It's about the pickup. It's about the... Uh, Forcing the ultimate out, forcing the BKB out. I mean, IG, they're really far down right now, but they at least have a rash with their own name. I don't want to give up on them, and I, I'm pretty sure IG definitely believes. I think they're in definitely a better position now than they were like 20 minutes ago. Lumi, can I just say, <laughs> look at the gold earned here. Radiant, 94.5 thousand. Dire, 95.8 thousand. These teams are separated by about a thousand gold at 54 minutes. And of course this game is about so much more than gold earned, but really just a, a hallmark of how damn even this game is. Cannot believe it. Oh yeah, this is bringing to mind that game, which was a long time back. Uh, I think that was the game where there was like seven Roshans done before a team finally won the game. Maybe I'm thinking of another one. But we're getting into that epic long game territory at this point. Scythe the Vice up on the Brewmaster of all heroes, who also has a gem, just to do some dewarding. You know you're late when Brewmaster has a, uh, has a Scythe the Vice. <laughs> I'm very surprised that he actually did not offer uh, a Soul Curious. It definitely allowed him to tank a little bit longer as well as do a lot more damage in the team fight. But it seems like damage is definitely not the issue, but lockdown is. So very good choice. Uh, that also means that he can't actually use the Hex for a long duration, because how long has Panda Ultimate last? So that's why uh, I was feeling that Assault might be a little bit better. But for now, they are going to lock down this uh, tower on the mid lane for free, basically. And this is the last tower on the map. Again, Marching Machine Rockets, Power Shot. Very difficult to actually go up on the high ground. Well, uh, and Blink, Blink Dagger gets picked up here on Tinker, I love that choice. You know what's going to help with that? It's the Aghanims on Chen, it's the fact that Lycan has 4,000 health and 18 armor, and when he's in wolf form, he has over, or he is actually over 4,000. Illusion! Oh, right. I, I really think Ehome could brute force their way down mid, but they don't want to take a risk, because one really bad team fight, if not costing them the game, will give IG a really good foothold, good map control. 
This buys time. Blink Dagger up on Ferrari, which actually, even though it's a very late Blink Dagger, to me this is a huge item. Because now IG have amazing initiation if they want it. Boots can travel into Blink, into Hex. Joe able to join that fight as well. IG can still find pickoffs of their own. They're just very squishy, so they have to be careful about it. But they can find them, and Ehome are going to play it safe. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. IG's never out when you have a global TP Hex on Nature's Prophet. You have a Blink Hex. Also coming from Global, from Tinker, you are always alive. You're always alive. Of course, we have his hitting the standard shackles, which are absolutely amazing. They're up, up for another smoke gank, and I, let's see if Ehome, yeah, they realize. They're you know, pairing up as 2 or 3. Tinker is going to just do his thing. He's going to just TP uh, and farm and farm, and uh, not farm, really, just counter push at this point. Uh, making sure the bot is uh, always pushed out, and if they ac actually get a pickoff, they will go forward to push. And here we go. That is Lycanthrope. He has 4,000 HP. Not sure they could actually even hex him down. They see MMY though. MMY gets hexed. Manta and look at the orchid damage though. Gets focused immediately. You get this rubbed. Still okay, but looks like MMY gets picked out. You get those storms are losing HP very rapidly as well. They see Chuan. Chuan losing HP so rapidly. Body block here from QQQ. Sick play. And that should be it for this engagement. Oh man. The gank not really working out. Fave is going to get picked off as well. <laughs> and really, unfortunately, Tinker can't really, you know, kind of. He can't TP in the base and, and like go for building traits. He, that that's not his hero. He can't do it. This is late. This is ultra late game Dota uh, in a Chinese in a game of Chinese Dota. You're probably not going to find a pick off. If you find one, there's almost certainly to be four, if not five, there. And well, we're seeing it. Everybody sticks together for Ehome. Sure, they get the initiation. It looked okay for the moment, but Lycan has his Abyssal Blade delivered and completed now, and 2.4k. The only thing he can really do is maybe buy. A boots of travel, and then I guess replace the Vlads eventually, get something a little bit bigger if he wants to, but Lamb is pretty much maxed out, and he is absolutely ferocious. The problem is, like, they had that initial ability to kite, but his ult lasts so long, and he just continues to chase. It's weird, but the fourth staffs just aren't enough anymore. It's like they need a second layer, and they just don't have them. Or, they, I mean, they could, again, they could kite and stun for such a long time, but they just can't kill Lycan. It's 4,000 HP, like you mentioned. And to be honest, like, there, is there even 4,000 damage on the IG squad? They could do uh, quite a bit. Uh, Zoe's catching up, Chuan's catching up, but it's just the time that it takes them to do that damage. That's the issue right here. Right, and I'm sure you could kill Lycan once, and there's what, what about the Panda? What about the Storm? There's just so much hero that needs to be focused and not enough damage to go around. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. I love the way you put it. There's so many targets that are high priority, oh, and just a lot of disables, but again, no damage dealer. There's no Morphling, there's no Anti-Mage. There's no big damage items up on the semi carries. Prophet has the Crystalis, has the Manstell, but even still, he's just not hitting that hard. Maybe once he completes the, completes the Daedalus, maybe picks up something like an MKB, that's where Prophet will really start to hurt. But even then, I don't think he can stand toe to toe with the Lycan. It's just Prophet's not built that way. He's not built to be a pure DPS dealer. And we're. Yep. You know, I thought IG would have this late game based on their start, based on the amount of utility items, uh, the amount of disable they can toss Ehome's way, but Ehome have done a great job. Winning a couple of key fights and then farming big the entire game. Look at the farm up on the like and still keeping pace with a prop and a tinker, which is actually really damn hard to do. Or uh, this late into a game, and you know, even with tinker prop have almost 500 CS, it just it feels like they need double that. To be honest, I thought they were IG's gonna win the game just right now when they had that big comeback team fight. But I mean, Ehome again, so so vigilant. When it comes down to you know saving for buyback, making sure they don't give up ages, and they, they took it back. They took it back. So, IG had a, a you know what in in Ehome's eyes a lucky team fight uh, off a pickoff, and they immediately respond to it. And again, no more pickoff will be seen in this game uh, against Ehome. They are good just you know fool, fool us once, you know shame on me. Fool us twice, shame on you, right? Or was it the other way? Or I don't even know. Fool me, fool me once, shame on. Uh, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, I think that's the expression. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, we're not, we're not here, we're not here to provide our eloquent colloquialisms, uh, or sayings. We are here to cast this game, so, uh, we butchered that one, but no worries, no worries there. Tanker, here's the, the only thing I can really come up with for damage for IG, is an Ethereal Blade Dagon 5 for Ferrari late game. There aren't really <laughs> that many BKBs, but, I mean, a, a Dagon 5 is 8k gold, he does have the Ethereal Blade if he wants it. Uh, but really, he just got the ghost after doing Lycan, which is nice. It's nice, but it's not really enough. It, it, there's still magical damage coming his way. I, I think at this point, Tinker has to just go for massive hex. That's his only job in team fight. Blink around, hex, use ghost scepter to make sure he, he stays alive, and allow Zolt to deal the DPS, allow the enchantress to deal the DPS. 
Zone right now saving for buyback, but definitely has to go for the Ethereal Blade. Look at the bot lane, even they just, they're having trouble pushing in mid, they're like, okay, well, we'll poke ahead in right now, and, uh... Well, they do what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh! It's YWF lagging, he's just standing there, zip in, disruption defensively. Sprout holding TJ in place, there's another zip, will fill that up. Poison Nova, four step away by YWF, everybody just trying to survive, but it's Ferrari who gets caught out, and Ferrari, being caught out, will probably go down. But they kill off the Venomancer who like it in the middle of the fight. Look at the damage, the buyback from Profit. But they could probably just right-click this, right-click this tier 4, or this tier 3, no! They're gonna back, they actually don't want to fight, Joe bought back. Maybe trying to wait for that next panel to try to end the game. Stun on the show, he should be able to escape. Meanwhile, look at mid lane, it's pushing all the way in. Oh, King J, where's that shackle from YWF? <laughs> oh, the send back by QQQ. That would have been a disaster if it weren't for this Chen. Here comes Ferrari in the back lines, looking for the pickoff. Lamb is not the one you want to focus, Ghost Step used again. They really want to try and kill QQQ, but even if he dies, he's got buyback. And really, it's only the Chen. Look at the mobility! From Ferrari just leapfrogging around the map, they will kill QQQ. And Ehome, they try to force high ground, they don't get it. They still have Cheese and like and they still have Aegis and Storm. But they're not breaching that tier 4, they're not breaching the second set of racks. I mean, that was a great initiation from Panda. It, it was a, a cla blink in, clap, and hex immediately and went for the ultimate. Jage couldn't kill the uh, Windrunner though, because of the Shadow Dem Demon disruption. Four staff out after the disruption. Mech out. Here we go, blink in on the top lane. Again, hex on Zoe. And now the disruption should not save Zoe. Zoe. Oh no, big zip in for PCD. Again, out of mana. But the initiation was already done. Zoe's going to be done. He's going to have to buy back. No big deal there. Oh, Lycanthrope gets a silence here. And YYF gets backed by the Abyssal. That's two more. Kill. Does Zoe actually have the buyback? No, he bought back in the last team fight, and the arrow's being drawn on the mini map. Ehom finally sees the opening. 62 minutes in the game, they are gonna go for it, and I'm not too sure whether the remaining heroes on IG will defend a full 50 seconds for Faith, and he's not gonna do really anything. It, it really, 70 seconds to Zoe. With, a, with an absolutely maxed out Lycan, this has gotta be a second lane of Rex, if not more. No buyback on the Profit, but then again, I mean, maybe not, actually, just because they have the chain hex from Ferrari. Uh, just, the ability to kite is there, but one good zip by PCT will end his life. This is Chinese Dota, right? And the, the sort of the complaint about it is there's no action. Guys, there's 79 kills in 63 minutes. The old stereotypes, they are wrong. It's just brilliant, concerted play by both teams. Really a ballet to watch. So beautiful to behold. PCT gonna just let that Aegis go. All they want is the Rax. Lamb pops the ult. Will ignore Enchantress here and focus the Rax. The cheese gets used. They're gonna get one lane of Rax. They might even be able to get mid as well. Oh, Ehome. Late game liking with all these items. Too easy for them to push when they want to fight. Where's for IG? They had the creep killing ability, but not that ability to mow down the Rax. Are we going to a game three? It feels like we are. God, man. We might be. We might be. IG still not giving up. They're like, man, let's just play this one out. By the way, Roshan is back alive. And again, you talked about how quickly like and roll down. I hope somebody wrote down the time on either of these teams. The game has been absolutely hectic. But these pro players are just really good. Time awareness, map awareness. And right now, IG just trying to stay alive, pushing out every single wave. And uh, Ehome Lamb okay. checking for Rosh. Can I just point out that Lamb has 7.4k gold right now? Maybe we're gonna see a divine rapier. Sell the sell the power treads. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> uh, he could go for something like an MKB or you know a, a satanic. Really, whatever he wants would be great. But if he wants to get that Aegis and a rapier, that's gonna be big trouble. And he doesn't need move speed at this point. It's a little bit lacking in attack speed, but he's got the mansa to compensate. So whatever he wants, buyback has to be priority number one. Boots of travel probably after that. But beyond that, he's still got at least 4k gold to work with. I actually think Purge Play sounds like a pretty snazzy idea, but Ooh, not sure like if the it's... the Mantle uh, Illusions. Yeah, that could be decent. Or, or just get a Hex. That, that would be pretty cool, too. Uh, definitely, he's going to trade his uh, Power Treads for a uh, Boots Travel. That's definitely going to be happening. Here we go. Again, uh, perhaps Ehome trying to bait out the Roshan. Maybe that's exactly what Faith is having in mind as well. Both teams very, very slow, making sure no mistake can be made, especially for IG. And even for Ehome, if they make a mistake at right now, we're late enough in the game that the drone can be sniped, like, very easily, I may add. Especially right. when there's so much damage on profit. Look at the tier 4s as well, they've 500 health on one, 700 on another. There is a glyph to help deal with that, but you're right, the profit's big. The throne's not exposed, but it could be exposed very quickly. And that's right. gotta be in the back of IG's minds right now. This is, this is where you throw all your traditional tactics out the window. It's not about killing Rax even, you know, it's of course not about killing heroes. It's not about getting Aegis, although that helps. It's not even about killing Rax or Tier 3s 
or tier fours. It's about killing the throne by any means necessary. So I'm really glad you brought that up, uh, because we might, we just might see something crazy like that this game. Oh, real boy. fast to point out, Zoe has to go for buyback, but not the time to buy it back. So that's why they're not really storming into the Rocher and not smoke ganking actively. They need to make sure all of their players do have the buyback. Tinker, by the way, again, have to go 43 seconds to the buyback. Windrunner has no gold nor the buyback time. Uh, really, the word with word with same thing with Enchantress. I love the fact that Enchantress picked up Ghost Scepter. A little known fact is that if you're manually casting the Impetus, which doesn't seem to be the case, as he's uh, actively auto casting, if you're manually casting Impetus, you could actually have been Ghost Scepter and just basically cast Impetus orbs. Uh, but that generally works a little bit better if you're not attacking for a lot of you know attack speed. Right. Late game situation, you generally want to leave it all the cast. The other, I guess the other issue is the heroes he really wants to do damage to, it's just hard to stay away from them because Storm can sit on yes. top of you, the blink in from Panda, and you're not right clicking the Panda ult form. And then of course the Lycan who's just running with haste, so Enchantress needs that distance, but she's really not finding it in these later fights. We saw in the earlier engagements they were winning, she was, Chua was doing the massive damage, probably killing my voice in the process, but <laughs> as of late he hasn't been able to find those openings. Yeah, and as of late, Shadow Demon has not picked up an item. In fact, he has the same item for the past 40 minutes. It's tough playing the fifth, man. It's really tough playing the fifth. But... Com compare that to, especially on a team with a Prophet and a Tinker. Uh, but right. compare that to the Venomancer, Pipe, Force Staff, Urn, Power Treads. And uh, then, of course, the yep. Chen's massive as well. Force Staff, Aghanims, Arcane Boots, Mech. These supports for Ehom are very, very farmed. And that's, to some degree, that is making the difference in these fights. It definitely is. I mean, Fave is literally just basically last gonna two seconds in the fight and he dies. Even Windrunner, right? She hasn't actually got an item for a long, long time. Just had the ultimate orb and that's it. Yeah, once this hex. Really, I'm not sure another hex would matter, although it's nice in theory. Uh, they have so many already. But in any case, he's not gonna have it anytime soon. And Well, this is what Ehom want to do. Just sort of wait for the lanes to push in, pressure them a little bit, uh, and then they'll go for Roche with that creep equilibrium favoring their, favoring their side pretty naturally. But if you have to try and get the lanes pushed out, Prophet and Tinker, best in the business of doing it, mid and top being pressured, being pushed out right now. And we're seeing that elaborate dance that takes place whenever a late game Roshan is the object. Or the objective. Yep. Just a couple more seconds before the buyback to really get ready. I think essentially they're ready. Even if they, uh, even the Prophet dies right now, he would have it up for the next engagement. Storm Straight, again, as always, is a key. He has a Hex as well. And that's big. Lamb is going for the Roshan. He's, he doesn't care about it. He's getting bashed. No big deal. Hardest says, you know, lulls. But for now, Roshan down to half HP. Looks like Purge already used on Lamb. Ooh, Hex already used. Zip in here, BKB. They're going to focus on 430. Defensive disruption here. Fade going to get picked off again. Once again. So many. No, they actually Hex up Storm. Storm's going to get picked off. He has no Aegis. Does he have buyback? Yes, he does. He's going to be zipping really, really far across the map. Trying getting focused. He cannot get away. Two second Abyssal Sun. Storm in the back line. If you look at the mini map, we'll be zipping across the map very, very soon. Zo is going to get picked off. And I don't think they have the buyback. No, he buys back immediately. Still okay right now, TPing back in the fight. Do they have enough though? I just don't think without the uh, Chuan alive, they uh. actually have it. Blink in, Hex against YYF down to half HP. Zul Cell Sprouts trying to do the right click, but he's actually losing HP very rapidly. King J gets shackled up, but Zul, he, he just can't do it. He's trying to run, but just nowhere to run. And I gotta say, that's the game. Uh. I cannot see IG making a comeback. This Lycan, just too much. He's too much at this point. He's always in ult form now. Uh, they can't they can't kite him sufficiently hexed for like 10 seconds and he's like okay i'll just kill you in that that remaining eight seconds that i have uh, to work with and plus it helps that pct as that follow-up and that was about as well as ig could have fought they really didn't make any big mistakes that fight the position was okay the shackles were there the, the size of ice used well to chain lockdown heroes but it just wasn't enough and here we go on to ferrari probably gonna get picked off no, he'll be okay. PCT blows the BKB for that, but picks up the Aegis. Could be sent back to base by the Chen. We'll see if they want to do that. But with Scythe as well as Orchid, he'll get his mana back in a very short order. That's got to be the game. I mean, it really does. That, that was their big chance. They also used buybacks. Prophet's still dead for a while. It really feels like a matter of time before Ehome claim this, which means if they do, we're going to a game three. <laughs> Oh, man, man, epic game of Dota today so far, and it can go on in Derry for one more game. And uh, it looks like it might happen as well. Ehome still, you know, bitter, or excuse me, IG bitterly holding on. 
over 9,000 go on land right now. This is ridiculous. That's where he's at right now. He could, he could cheese, buy back, Bruja Travel, TP in, and still have buy item in the middle of that. Like, that's that's how rich this guy is. And, of course, Ehome you, you know, just play this one out. You know, this is where you want to be a lone druid. I mean, this is just insanity. <laughs> By the way, Prophet's Not actually no Prophet's actually far more than him. But he's bought back like five or six times, so just not having the yes. item to show for it. There we go, Lamb's gonna just pop right in, Storm Surge zipping right in, defensive disruption, everything is pexed up, but it does not matter to the Lycan, 2 seconds sun against 430, Gold Scepter or not, actually they're surviving, they're picking up PCT one more time, though he has the Aegis, Lincoln, Clap from Panda, Ultimate gets dropped down, YYF first to go down here, is he, is he, he's gonna go down eventually, Lycan will have his wolf form back up very, very soon, second layer of Hex is going on Tron, Tron defensively disrupted again, Faith's gonna get picked up, GG gets called, Zoe knows it, everybody knows it, they fought bitterly, but it's just not enough. We're gonna go to game three, ladies and gentlemen. My god, what an insane matchup. IG versus Ehome. Insane. Oh, this is only game two. For those who missed it, IG took game one. It was much more one sided than this, but Ehome, in the end, they persevere. They prevail. We actually called it wrong, at least I did. I really thought IG would have this in that mid to late game scenario, but just lacking in the damage. We saw that was ultimately the weakness with their lineup, as well as just not having that frontline tank. IG played well, Eho played just a little bit better, and so we head to the deciding game three of Beyond the Summit's World Tour. Semi-finals action coming your way. Whoever wins this will be in the grand finals, facing off against either EG or CLG. I cannot wait for those grand finals, but we have a couple of games to go before it. Game three, ladies and gentlemen, it is coming, it is coming soon. I am LD, he is Luminous, together we are David and David. Don't go anywhere. Game three coming up momentarily, you won't want to miss it.